Hey guys, in this video tutorial we're going to take a look at uh, sculpting the human ear. Um, your next homework assignment. And I'm going to do a quick little demonstration on how to get that started. So um, right here inside of ZBrush, one thing I like to do is just, you know, practicing and sculpting the, the actual ear right on the side of the a sphere is okay and all, but I usually like to at least give it more or less like a actual head uh, shape. So what we're going to do is with our move brush, we're going to scale it up a, a bit and I'm just going to pull it down from the front and actually we'll turn off perspective as well so we can kind of see the shape that we're generating. And if this is difficult for you guys too, don't forget uh, back when we did the skulls, we do have grids here. If we were to use the, the Spencer skull grid here on uh, turning on the fill mode to three, we're going to be able to see um, an actual representation of a human skull. Therefore, we can get the shape right and then start developing the ear on the side real easy. So what I'm going to do here from our front view, just make our brush real large, bring it in from the side. We'll go in the side view and just shaping it out with the move brush. Get a general idea, a general shape of, of the human skull. And this is, of course, again, just to help us when we're actually placing the ear and developing the, the shapes for the ear itself. So you can take this as far as you want. Uh, I mean, honestly, just to do the ear and practice, uh, this is probably um, going to work just fine. But I want to just kind of take a few more seconds here to get our shape real nice. And then in the front, I'm going just for visual representation, I'll sink in the eye cavities a little bit here. Do the same for the nose cavity. Run some Dynamesh, smooth that out. And we get a basic shape, basic idea of a human head. We could put a nose on there too if we want. Um, pretty much do whatever we want, but we got the basic uh, shape that we need. So in the side view here, we're going to take a look at the, the view here as well. And you can see where the mandible comes right here. And let me just adjust. I was playing around with my uh, brushes earlier. So just kind of dig in there, kind of give us a representation of that. And then that jawbone, or, or sorry, the cheek bone coming out. So we know approximately where our ear is going to be, okay, right about there. So a couple things uh, we're going to be using for this process. Uh, one of the main things is, of course, masking. If you hold down Control, you have your mask. Uh, you can paint onto the, uh, the geometry. Um, right now I have a lasso for the stroke selected, but generally uh, by default it will be on freehand. So you just paint. Alt does the opposite, so you can see I can add and then hold down Alt to take away. Holding down Control and dragging a box off to the side uh, will clear the mask. Doing it one more time, of course, we'll run Dynamesh. And if we hold down Control under Stroke here, we can select again the lasso. Lasso, I like uh, in, in this sense, uh, we could paint it as well with our, you know, just with uh, freehand it. But in here, the lasso will just make a ear like shape. Usually, I go a little bit smaller too, because once we pull it out, uh, where the ear actually connects to the skull um, is a bit. Uh, smaller if you consider the rest of the lobe um, coming up and flapping over the top. So generally when you create this mask you're going to want to make it a little smaller than what the ear is actually going to be as far as the, the shape and the, the size of it. Alright so there's our mask. We're going to hold down control and click outside to select the inverse. So just holding down control and clicking once outside the geometry will of course invert it. When it's inverted here, we're going to go to our move brush. And with the move brush, you're going to pull it out, pull it down, size our brush a little bit, and just start shaping it out to more or less an ear. All right, once you get it out away from the head enough, we'll clear our mask, run Dynamesh, and now we have some geometry here uh, that we can go and smooth out and fix up a little bit. All right, so there's our, our general shape, how to extract the ear or pull the ear out. Now we want to take a look at uh, a couple reference images. I did provide you guys a, a link, uh, so let's go take a look at the link real quick. Um, right here is a human anatomy beauty of variation. Uh, I thought it was a pretty cool post. Um, 
different vari variations of the human ear. And uh, it actually, uh, if you click on here too in the link, it'll go into the next one. You can see the helix, how it comes in towards the, the ear canal. And over here, it's attaching onto the front of the face. This is correct, this is not. All right, going to the next one. Here's that leg of the helix that we were just taking a look at there. And, uh, you know, verbiage helix, anti-helix, um, all the, the lobe and everything that, that uh, you know, it's good to have that vocabulary there. Um, not that it's absolutely necessary in order for you to sculpt it, but it's good to know the name of things. So if your, your, your uh, art director comes back and he's like, man, uh, your, your leg of the helix is, isn't right, and you'll know exactly what he means or where you need to go and, and, and correct. Here are free lobes, uh, basically just meaning that the ear lobe itself, um, you can see it just hangs hangs down. Okay? And uh, here are deep and shallow, sorry, uh, attached lobes where they actually connect into the side of the head. Deep and shallow, and just a couple of different variations. So you can see here's wide, here's a little bit more uh, narrow. These things all just kind of give you a good reference as to the, the overall shaping that you want to generate. All right, so back into our sculpt. We're going to take that knowledge. I'm going to use the uh, dam standard brush here to mark out some of our, our areas. As you saw, the, the, the leg of the helix comes around and actually goes down into the ear there. And as you can see here, too, we start putting any kind of detail in this vicinity. It's going to get pretty messy pretty quick just because our resolution for our Dynamesh is still at 64. So I'm going to take that up to 128 run Dynamesh and you can see uh, we have a much more dense, uh, the density in our model is much greater now. So we can come in and actually start just sculpting them using the clay buildup to kind of poop this area out. We'll give them a hanging uh, ear lobe. And you can see we're already just, you know, pretty much getting the, the overall shape that we need. Get that leg of the helix going inside. ear canal and then just you know go slow take your time the first couple times you do this obviously but you practice it a bunch um, and I'm sure you'll get you guys will get it down too so there's our general shape I'm gonna run Dynamesh and you see it's just it's there we got the right shape but the uh, the overall like placement of it you can see how far off the side of the head it's sticking um, so we got a lot more to correct here but uh, definitely a good start Another tip, uh, just when you're holding down shift, um, that's your smooth obviously, and it's set to Z intensity of 100. So we wanna bring that uh, much lower so when we're smoothing out here, we don't just lose all the, the detail and form that we just created, um, but we're able to smooth it out just the same. It just takes a little bit longer to, to smooth it obviously. And then we'll start moving the ear uh, in towards, but whenever I move it, you can see it's just moving the whole head in general, and uh, it's going to be quite a battle here to try and get it into the right location. So what we're going to do next is simply lasso it out. So we're going to lasso this guy out. You see about a three-quarter angle view, and then just deselect any of the areas that you don't want in your selection. Select the inverse, and now when we move the ear around, we're not uh, going to be affecting the placement of the, the head. So I can bring these in and go to the side view and just real quick kind of play around with the overall positioning and shaping of the ear depending on like how you want it to bend over from this angle and smooth it out a little bit for the connection. Clear our mask, run some Dynamesh again and then come and smooth it back in. You can see we got a much better location for the ear now sticking right off the side of the head. They're a little larger <laughs> than normal ears, but I shouldn't say that. <laughs> They're larger than my ear is. All right, so there we go. Decent overall shape. And we'll come back in with the damn standard brush. Okay, and then just constantly reviewing back to our reference Coming back in here, reviewing a reference, coming back in here constantly. All right, another uh, way to handle this too, as far as reference is concerned, uh, you know, uh, we can set up the image plane and, and slap one of the ear variations uh, that we want to use on that. So we're going to come up to 
this side location here, kind of uh, click on this two arrow uh, area, and it's going to unlock this area in the side, which then we will take our draw tab, drop it into the side over here, and within this, like, uh, we'll go to the left, right, and you'll see it's a faded out. That's because floor is not yet turned on. There's our skull that we were using earlier. And from here, we're going to use our, our maps like one. I'll just turn off all together. And then the other one we're going to import. So we're going to go in here, import, and I saved out the, the JPEG image there. So if we take a look, there are all our variations of different ears. And now it's a matter of just kind of selecting one, figuring out which one we want to go for. Um, I don't know, let's see, our shape is somewhat similar. Let's say maybe this one here. So we're going to go to adjust. And inside this adjust view area, you're going to pan around and you'll find the these uh, white circles that you'll then uh, just move. And that's the area that's going to crop out of our image. So we won't see all the other variations. We'll just see uh, this one variation. As a matter of fact, now looking at it a little closer, you see it's kind of blurred out. So we might actually um, just go with like this one here. And again, it doesn't really matter which one we do. Uh, we just started it. So there we go. Once you have a, your selection made, hit OK. And you'll notice here is just the ear itself, not all the other ones. Now from there, just uh, adjust its scale and placement. So we can uh, adjust the vertical and the horizontal offset. And now we have ear right there in our uh, viewport that we can utilize for our referencing. So I'm going to grab and just start manipulating our sculpt thus far to match a little more appropriately to the reference image there. There we go. So now we have all this uh, great reference and we're going to just smooth it out quite a bit. Get us back to pretty much a base. I was just kind of freehanding it uh, earlier with our damn standard brush. We'll come in and just kind of mark out where that leg of the helix comes in. There we go. And a little bit more of the lobe. Here is the detached lobe, obviously, there. So. Now you can toggle on and off the floor so you can see what you've just done without the, the view uh, getting in your way. And with the clay build up, we're going to just build up the areas that we know we're going to kind of pull out. And then holding down Alt, we'll go on the inside there and push in. Much better. Run Dynamesh. Check our shape. Now, if we had front images as well, we could use those to our advantage too. Obviously, for our referencing. Uh, another thing, a uh, quick tip uh, you do want to be aware of here is when you're working on a thin item like this, sometimes your brush can, you know, affect both the front and side depending on the thickness of the the shape you're sculpting on. So what we'll do for that, uh, just to avoid that happening. See again, it's pulling in from the outside or in the inside. We're going to come up here to where it says brush, auto masking, and we're going to turn on back face masking. Now, this is a brush specific item or, or setting. Um, so therefore, if I flip to like a different brush, like there's my move, there's my damn standard, and you can see it's off. Then I hit Alt 2, which is my hotkey for my clay buildup, and it's on. So, what this means is no matter what, it's not going to pull from both sides. So really helpful for this type of thing. Uh, cloth as well. You can give it a little bit more shapeliness from the back. And just play around with the overall shape of what we're creating here. And of course, always go back, turn on the floor again. Assess what you have, what you've done thus far. make the necessary corrections. Alright, so there we go. It's still uh, super low 
um, as far as the resolution right now, but there's decent uh, startup for our ear. Another thing you want to check um, is turning on perspective. You want to make sure that the ears still show um, with perspective on. If not, it means you're the shape of your head is just uh, pretty far off. You may have to like actually pull it back a little bit just to get this, the setup right. But definitely don't want to go into perspective mode and see something like this where it's like, where did my ears go? You can barely see them. All right, so they should be sticking out off the sides of the head. And then just for fun, let's uh, just mess around here for a little bit on our sculpt. Just since we, we come this far, might as well give him a, a nose or something there. Rah, nose. And since we've already done noses plenty of times and you've already got your practice in on that, you know, I'll spare you of talking over it, but you'll see what we're doing here. goblins and gremlins and stuff like that. There we go. So the nose started up. Keep sculpting. I can get carried away here, obviously. <laughs> but there you go. So we'll turn off Dynamish, subdivide it a few times, uh, get more resolution there. And it's just a matter of coming back and sculpting in more detail. You'll see the resolution is much better now. You may have to up the uh, intensity of the smooth brush now that we have more geometry going on here. For the, the ear canal itself, generally you don't have to go quite so deep. And of course, if you're doing this for game, and it'll be part of the texture map and stuff, so you don't actually need those extra faces and geometry in there. And there we go. If you want to do like elven ear or something, you could always stretch it out and play around with the shape again. I could have used my mask to avoid moving the, the head there, but you get the idea. Alright, so there's an ear. And a decent start at one. And again, it would just take a few extra minutes to go in and add in some of those extra details. And especially since I'm in it so much larger now, I'm going to give it a few more just variation. A little bit more. And we'll smooth it back. So just have some fun with it. Alright, so what you need to do for your homework, obviously, is uh, sculpt five different uh, ears. Um, please ensure that you create at least one human ear, and then from there, have some fun and experiment. Um, same processes and techniques, um, just different shapes each time. Um, and feel free to use the, the variation uh, images that, that are provided there on the LMS. Um, but there you go. Hope you guys enjoyed this, and uh, next up we'll be getting into eyes and eyelids. So I um, hope this uh, video helps you guys out, and uh, look forward to seeing what you create. Thanks.